Man, that sure was a saucy episode of Extra we just did. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy! Yeah, it's awesome that we're finally back to Zero One and Kira Major. Oh, let's, boy! Let's never discuss those last four weeks ever again. The dark times. The the lost episodes. Oh, well, we talked about Bakugan? <laughs> Yes. And Mystic Knights of Tirana No. Hey, that was fun. Yeah. I wish I the enjoyed gun that. was broken. <laughs> Let's keep talking about those things. You know what? You know what we should do, though? We should kill the roll call. Oh, no. Blech. We are live! Mike! Zenkai Gun! Connect. Loading. Broadcast. Tempered Zeal! Bluecaster! Super Ichi! Loud and Impulsive! Craycaster! Late! Illuminating the Tokuverse! Goldcaster Garza! Power of Anime runs through my veins! Crimsoncaster! Show Raven! Respecting the source material! Greencaster! Zenshin! Broadcasting hundreds of opinions across the world! Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. Oh, yeah. Welcome to episode 299! 99! 99! Radio Sentai Cast Ranger. Yes. It's episode Nose Pass. Oh boy! I like Nose Pass, but I hate this Promo fucking Pass. Yeah, oh, so Pass I, ugly. So I guess we have gotta go to the mountain to evolve them yeah. to Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> no. Live episode in Hamilton. I just remember the I just remember the animation for Nose Pass and Emerald was just him like bouncing up and back and forth, back and forth. And Is, just, eh. Isn't he supposed to be like an Easter Island head or something? Yeah, something like that. I like Nose Pass. He's actually cute. Anyways, this is the podcast where we talk about Common Rider and Super Sentai, and usually a feature topic that's somewhat similar to those two things. We are a bunch of bit stealers who get together every week. We're a bunch of shit talkers. <laughs> Here, look at that schnoz. Oh, and look, if you uh, look at my design looks like- in that no in, in that thumbnail. Boy, oh boy, you guys seem to have gotten a uh, slightly higher form than me. We all had form changes. Yeah. You have to be on the show to get one. Ooh. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's cool. Shiny uh, nose pass is gold. I thought you, you said that and I just <laughs> see that. I'm like, oh shit. That's a shiny nose pass. Is that what? Is that Leomon? <laughs> that looks like a Digimon. Yeah, it looks like Leomon. Is Armor Hide like doing the Digimon the episode? Oh yeah, Armor Hide is episode Dino Tigermon. Digimon aren't numbered. Unless right. you go by cards. They should be. Yeah. Um, so if you're listening to us for the first time, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like what you hear, make sure to follow, subscribe, do all the cool shit. I already did the thing. Oh, what'd you, you say? You said we're a bunch of bit stealers since Scar oh. said my line. Yeah. Oh, I said shit talkers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, I get it now. Oh, Ladies yeah, gentlemen. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, do your best. Yeah. I try. I did my best. Not you. <laughs> Them. Yeah, I don't fun. care how hard you try. <laughs> Them. <laughs> it's him on chance. It's my favorite fighting Pokemon. I practice. Fire, fire punch, punch on the mailman. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Uh, this is the first week that, uh, Kamen Rider and Super Sentai has resumed airing after the invasion! So, because I'd been avoiding them, I took last weekend to watch all of the filler specials! You do that, I'm gonna go grab a beer. He actually is. Give me one. But before we get into that, before we get into what we're talking about this week... Uh, make sure everyone listening and watching, uh, pop down in the description there and order yourself some food with our Skip the Dishes code that you can eat while you listen. <laughs> that was my Pokemon profile picture last year. Okay. <laughs> Hitmonchan, yeah. Little Mac. <laughs> Hitmon Mac. I love them. Nick! <laughs> Anyone ever wants to fight me on Smash Brothers, Little Mac's my main. And uh, if you're listening, now that episodes are airing again, if you're listening to this on Saturday, the day these episodes go out, Pop a comment down below about how you're one of our premium cast fans because yeah. you've listened to it when it's relevant. Wow. 
I mean, the, when the next episode airs, the all of our fans are irrelevant. If you're, irrelevant. Irrelevant. If you're a premium cast <laughs> fan, that means you're irrelevant. <laughs> I didn't say our fans become irrelevant. I said our discussion becomes irrelevant. So all of our discussions are relevant, so, Ichi. So that- said the one who's here the least. But we have a plan. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Skip the dishes to order there. So. Before we get into the actual discussion, I'm going to quickly go over some of the important bits of the filler specials, which include the Zero One President Special, Episode 1 and 2, the Shooting Special, and Episodes 1 and 2 of the Occupation Tyson. How the hell did I spell beer on me? Skill- amazingly. And speaking of amazing, uh, the filler specials for Kira Majin included cutscenes from Kira Major's Episodes 1 and 2, and Episode 1 and 2 of Machine Talk, and then the Gemental Lab. So after that, what we're talking about this week is Zero One episode 35.5 and Kira Major episode 11. So why was this episode not just labeled episode 36? I don't know. Like, that just sounds stupid. It didn't feel, it did, because it didn't feel like an actual full episode of Zero One. So a lot of shows have clip episodes, but yes. they're still considered This is a unique episodes. situation. I don't know. Anyways, and then on top of that, our actual feature topic for this week is Live Man episodes 28 to 30. And we'll get into that. Which is a shockingly good show. But How we, good? You'll have to stay tuned. Ah, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Well, this, I'm going to need another beer. You do that while we play the bumper. I was going to make a James speak, but the website wasn't working. Oh. Oh, just like our uh, bumper machine there? Shut up. I fixed it in post. Can I make Dragon Ball jokes now? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. So, I wait, we're to... actually we're talking about the the like the other specials. I'm just gonna quickly go over anything that was of note from the filler specials. Okay, because I was gonna be like, I we didn't watch. I didn't watch them. No, all. I know, I know. But I didn't watch them until last weekend because I, I assumed they were all just fil- irrelevant filler specials. But apparently, the zero one specials actually had some worthwhile things to watch, and those included the hinting at and eventual reveal of Az, who is basically Dark Izu, the Arcs. Emissary, she called herself. So, Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Shadow Bell. the Hedgebot. Dark Bell. There's something fucked. Now, I don't know if they actually fucked. said this when these points were relevant, but what I'd learned over the course of these specials is apparently Naki was planted in Fua's head while he was in the hospital after getting fucked by Horobi. Which makes no fucking sense in this context. Like, who... No, I want someone to keep Cause the track. Because it, it made a lot more awkward. fucking sense when they mentioned, yeah, no, it's right from the get-go. Because who was talking about the fake past long before that fucking moment? No, I don't think... Mm. Raven just said fuck four times. Yeah, that is yeah. an interesting point. And, like, it, the, the it, way, the way we were talking about this before, Raven we were led to believe that Naki himself. was in his head for the longest time, and her being in his head is how he was able to become a common Rider. Yeah, exactly. Because you know how a lot of common Rider shows are where you have to have, like, part of the monsters or, or whatever. You have to use the yeah. enemy's own technology to become a common Rider. Like, in Exe, they have to have the anti- the antibodies of, of bugsters in order to transform. You mean like how way, way back in the very, very first Kamen Rider, the guy was made out of shocker technology? Exactly. That's that's what that all is based yeah, on. Yeah, but that had to have been planted in his head right from the get-go of the series in this case, because the chip was the very... Re- chip and Naki's presence was the very reason those fake memories were implanted, and that was kind of the entire fucking... The way, going I, for. the way I kind of see it is rider technology is imparted to the protagonist from the side of the Oh, okay. Blaze is saying that he already got the chip inside him before, which let him transform, but then during the surgery, that's when they put Naki, Naki in the into the chip. Uh, that makes sense. Okay, there that's you go. Because I was going to go on to uh. say, like, what about you, then? I don't know. Anyways, this show's getting a little confusing. <laughs> that was our special! <laughs> that thing we haven't watched yet. Yes. I did. It makes so much sense if you watch it. Um, yeah. So, that was pretty much the interesting part about the first present special. Mm. 
Uh, the second one is uh, just a recap of the tournament arc. Although I will say that at one point they were like, the rap battle that happened was an easy attempt to gather malice. But was it epic? How the fuck is a rap battle easy to gather malice from? <laughs> what are you saying about rap music? That it's epic and it will go down in history. Sure. A yeah. epic, a oh, epic shit. rap battle of history, if you will. God damn you. <laughs> so yeah, not much in the second part, but the shooting special had something in it that I've been waiting for for the longest fucking time. So, you know how Fua rips open the progress keys before putting them in the belt, and Yua actually puts them in the right way, yeah. authorizing them before yeah. opening them? Yeah. In this shooting special... Although it's only in voiceovers, Yua finally gives Fua the fucking business, telling him that he's been doing it wrong the whole time! And he just turns around and goes, screw you, this is my rule. He ignores her! Yep. God! I've been telling you forever, it's just, he knows, he knows he's making a mistake, he just doesn't care. He, it's his way of doing it. No, but they never explicitly addressed it. I know, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I was but telling you that... that it doesn't matter. Yeah, but he's gonna give himself a hernia. Or break the keys! Or hernia. He doesn't get break the keys. Like how I almost gave myself a hernia this week. Mm -mm. We don't care. Tell us afterwards. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. No, of course we care. <laughs> we do care, but tell us afterwards. <laughs> we don't care in character. <laughs> we don't care in character. Yeah. But man, I was floored that like we actually finally addressed this, but I'm sad that it had to be over a voiceover. And yeah, the whole point of the shooting special is Fua, having recently discovered his past was a lie, needs a confidence boost. So Yua decides to chop him in the neck because let's reuse footage from previous episodes. Judo chop! And drag him back to fucking Metsubo Genrai Net to plug him into their computer and have him recap all of the significant events of the show. And I love that they decided to recap when he got stabbed by Horby during Horby's debut fight, and Fu goes, Why are you showing me this? We're supposed to be boosting my confidence, you asshole! <laughs> oh, man. Okay, uh, the Occupation Tyson is just an excuse to show off all the human gears. The, 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 what they come up with for a reason to do it is... Fua wants to quit being a common rider. What other jobs exist out there? So they just recap all the jobs that the human gears oh do. God. <laughs> well, Plumber. There's homeless. Roofer. I mean, lawyer. He sent for a while there he was. Well, there's a wait, lawyer wait, named who? Bingo. Who are we talking about? I mean, Fua. Fua. He doesn't really do anything uh, for a while there. Does he, he have a home? He, probably somewhere. I don't no, know. He, li he, li he lives in that van. He lives oh, in the A's van. We know Not Ar anymore, he doesn't. Aww. We know Ar Not since he fucking got fired or quit or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. I mean, technically, yeah. I guess he quit. Yeah. By shooting at his well, boss. I mean, now he works for Heat and Manufacturing. Yeah, but there was that nice span of a couple episodes where he was, wasn't was working for Ames anymore and hadn't started working for Heat and yet. And I'm just like... Yeah, he's just fucking sitting there, like, unemployed and walking around. I just like to sit, think that he's just a murder hobo at that point. <laughs> yeah. Just for that little while, it's just like... Obviously, he can't stay in his apartment because fucking uh, guy's after him. Yeah. But yeah, like, episode... The, the second part of it, they show off all, like, the human gears related to sports. And they're like, does Fua do any sports? Uh, yeah, shooting. Archery? I mean... <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright, now let's get to the actual episode, which is 35.5 for some it's reason. It's a fucking recap episode! It's yet another oh, recap! Oh, okay, it's basically it's just... It, 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 <laughs> yeah. Spare change. Spare change, ma'am. So this is where we formally meet as... A. a. Darky Z. A. What? A. Dead ass. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I was... Um, so... Uh, I just went with it. I, I'm willing to start with this because I do want to bring this up because I thought this was a very, like, this, I, I'm ashamed and disappointed to see that this was a thing. So, like, you know, they haven't been filming for a while, so, like, they've been stuck at home and stuff like that. So, apparently, Izu's actor gained a little weight over the time, like, the hiatus, and 
Apparently, people just started fat shaming her online and stuff like that. And I'm just gonna fuck say, them. fuck you guys. That's not cool. I think she still looks amazing. She looks great. Yes, okay. No good. I will say at least it's noticeable to the point where I honestly thought, as was played by a completely different actress. That just means they have a good makeup department. That I just sat there like, holy shit, did they get somebody else to play her? Because she looks like her whole face shape looks different. Oh, oh, that's oh. So she just okay. Yeah, yeah okay. but yeah, but then also she's as is more like emotive, emotive. So she emotes more, which yeah. I like. She's kind of like sassy. I, I, I like it. it. And in the in the the filler specials, I don't know if this is going to carry on to the, the main show, but every sentence she would end with like a different, you know, like sentence suffix. You know, the way people speak in Japan. Yeah. Like, Dick was like Masuka, or yeah. Ari Masuka. She had a different one of those every sentence she spoke. Uh, so, sorry to cut conversation, but we just got an announcement of when the when that pretty denim movie comes out. <gasps> when? Uh, August 14th. Yeah! yeah. New denim movie! <laughs> cool. Um, so yes, Sweet. this episode is all about recapping the four members of MetsuboGenrai.net and why they achieved singularity. So basically, Horby's is being a daddy. Jin's is Horby being his daddy. Ikazuchi's is his little brother. Yeah. And Naki's is uh, being misused by Zaya. Aww. It's all pretty straightforward. But what's interesting is there's a shot for each one of them where they scan them and show off their statistics, and Jin's are all question marks. Yeah, we still don't know what the fuck happened to him. Yeah, where, how he came back, how he got the fucking Slash Riser. It's really and... obvious, especially in this episode. They ask him to his face several times, and he dodges the question. But, what, but what they if? are bringing up slowly, and the end of this episode does kind of show off, that there is another party involved in all this that brought him back. Yeah, Jen is talking to someone on the phone yeah, at the he's end. He's talking to somebody and communicating that shit's happened. Guy. What if? I, I swear to God, if it's Guy. <laughs> Although I won't discount that because think about the fact that his belt is called the Zaya Slash Riser. Yeah. Slash Riser. But what if? Here's my big theory. What if he's a clone? I mean, he's a robot, so kind of already, yes. But what like, if there's just, like, just what, what if it's not the same gin? Like, it's a new gin. He has all of the, he has all the, the same memories, so... He might as well be the same. Yeah, 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 but he doesn't know how he came back because there is no explanation. He's just in a new body. No, but he has yeah. all of the memories of his previous body. So. It's basically they just took his brain and stuck it in a new body. It still him. It was never a question of how. It's a question of who and why. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't necessarily think it would be Guy who did it. Guy hates human gears way too fucking much. That's why I don't think it was. But However, we do know we threat. do know that it's somehow related to Zaya because of that riser. The slash riser is made by Zaya. How much you want to bet? There's at least one guy in the weapons department at Zaya who fucking hates Guy, same as most of his employees. That's a good theory. Some there's some, probably some like defector inside Zaya who. Did pulled some shit to try and get back at guy. You know, you know who ev what everything you just said describes. Yua. She is the tech expert. She could have built a body for him. Oh I'm, yeah. Okay. Can we talk about the fucking zero one arc key? It the, looks like Fang Joker. The arc zero key. I fucking love it. And it, and that voice in it. Malice learning ability. Are you gonna get the belt? Very probably. Okay. I want to see what other sounds it has. Also, we heard Arc Zero's voice. It's fucking Eisen from Bleach. Yeah, it is. Uh, what what better voice than like the ultimate fuck you villain? We anime? had Gold Dry voiced by Ichigo, and now we've got Arc Zero voiced by <laughs> oh my Eisen. fucking god! Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why does everyone in Bleach just turn out to be bad? And then, yeah, we had Kenpachi voice the double driver, so... Oh, yeah. oh my god. Yeah, I feel like, though, if it was you, uh, who did bring back Jin, we would have found out by now? Oh, yeah, Uohara I was... I mean, we... Uohara Uohara was, was, she was... When he came back, she was still very much on that I will not disobey guy streak she had. Not to his face. Yeah, but it, she seemed a little too legit with that. What's funny, what's super funny, I love the, like, 
so it's someone else that he's been mind controlled. Like uh, as like scans like a, a thing out of each of them into like the key, and like it just Horribee's just like it's like so. What are you doing this? I do it as the Ark wills me to. I do it as the Ark wills me to. Yeah, it looked like some of their personalities were getting sucked out when they absorbed their data, but Horby didn't change at all because he has no personality. Yeah. But as the Ark wills, as the Ark wills. Shut it! <laughs> but yeah, and what was Shut interesting it. is, Jin, they, they take Jin's data at the end, but it does you don't see the data getting sucked out of their brain. It, it, I, I think the idea was like... like he's you were not, saying, as I was saying when that happened, because he's not actually connected to Metsubo Jinrai right now. Which has been a thing since he came back. Like, he's operating on new technology yeah. that the others don't have. And he's, he's on Windows 10. It's, he, didn't get, <laughs> he didn't get his data sucked out. He willingly transferred over the specific yeah. data he that he He beamed it over NFC. For. Yeah. Instead of Bluetooth. Oh, he's special. He's definitely... <laughs> he is a completely different kind of human gear than all of the others at this point. Yeah. He runs on Zoom. We have not, to this point... That aside means he only him, lasts 40 minutes. We have never. He's the only human gear in the series that doesn't have the fucking ear things to something. Yeah, because he has the condensed it's just necklace this little thing, kind of earring thing. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe, which you can buy. Maybe that's all you need. The rest of it's just like a fashion sense. I mean, it go. It it lines up with any technology once yeah. you get more efficient at making it, and, and you can condense it more. You know, like phones did, or did computers. Did they release those earbuds? Yes. Yep. I would like to have the human gear module. I don't know if they're out, out, but I actually no. I think we saw a video of them. I feel like you have to pierce your ears to get those in guard. Oh no! Or just tape them. <laughs> no, because someone made the Gen One human gear things because they actually bought those headphones, yeah. painted them chrome and shit like that, and oh, yeah. then just there you go, Gen One human gear headphones. But yeah, I'm just excited that Ikazuchi's back. He was being a real douchebag this whole episode too. He seems to, he seems to be pulling the same as Jin, and like now that he's back, he's a real fucking gothy edge lord bitch. But uh, I'll, I'll hold judgment until I see him actually do shit. It's like as if when you die and come back, you just become a snobby asshole. <laughs> That's just common writer writing in general. Yeah. It's just happened to Kiria. <laughs> you mean when uh, you died? Yes, we've all done it. I have it. Give it time. You're hanging out with the right crowd. It's just like that meme of the dude with the noose around his neck first time. <laughs> yeah, for James Rango first time. But, uh, um, but yes, Arc Zero looks gorgeous. Oh, okay, AC's so, so, interesting. So, so I, I don't watch Zero One. I didn't realize Ikazuchi Iku, was an astronaut. I'm like, oh, that explains the orange suspenders. Yeah. Or, or the orange uh, uh, coveralls. Also, if you look real close at Igazuchi's new clothes, he's got the Rikusen sigil on his shirt. Oh my goodness, I don't know what that means. From Kingdom Hearts. Oh. The X that they track him with. Uh, the dream drop. Well, yeah, Arc Zero looks... Okay. Cool. That's an Ava unit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm excited that now, going forward, we're back on track and we'll be getting back to regular plot episodes. Only nine more episodes. Next week is where Arc Zero proper debuts. So what? Uh, I so when Zero Two coming in? Probably I'm like a fight in Arc Zero. I'm gonna say maybe next week or the week after, after like after this one. Now they'll give us one proper episode of Arc Zero being fucking unstoppable. Broken. Yeah, and exactly then, why they got yeah. Seiji Takao to fucking and then, and then the next episode after that will be. A whole bunch of shit leading up to it, and then a transformation into Zero Two, like right at the end of the episode. Yep. And, and then, then the fight will the be that. Fight will be like three episodes from now. Yeah. Yep. You know, formula. <laughs> All right, let's get into Kira Major. Kira Major. Have you guys seen Groundhog's Day? Or um. Fuck. I forgot the other thing I mentioned. Well, before we get into the actual episode 11, so the recaps, the between invasion specials. Um, so apparently during the cut, the scenes that were cut out of episodes 1 and 2, they mentioned that Coconut Tower, apparently the front for their operations is actually a high-class jewelry company, and I don't think they mentioned that. Oh. No, they did so, nice. Carrot and Coconut Tower has a legitimate business. Oh, so it's like Scratch. Why is it a yeah. palm tree? Because, God damn it. I don't know. It's called Coconut Tower. I know, but it still bugs me! 
Why does it bug you? I don't know! It's just like they're based on fucking palm tree! And, like, the, the Kira Majors are narrating over their own recap, but I love that Senna goes, Sorry I ruined our first roll call ever by having it be my clone. <laughs> hey, it's like if you had yourselves up. building a guy was shaped like a tree, it was. Um, and then, so after that, the machine talk episodes are literally the machines doing their own talk show because they saw it on TV once. Oh, here's a crazy thing that they mentioned in the director's cut. So Hakatami Nami mentioned how, like, the Zords themselves were like, um, oh, what's the word I was looking for? Uh, it, like... They were told in, like, uh, mythology or something. It's like, oh, they were destined... Like, like this thing was told throughout time that it would happen. That's why the symbols are on the... Oh, yeah, the yeah. Changer. Which I actually found out, apparently... Uh, around, it's just a wild coincidence that Jewel ended up imagining them into those vehicles. And apparently around their uh, boots. Yeah. Like, you know how they have the those... Same markings? Runes. Yeah, it's the same markings yeah. on, the, on the Changer. Yep. Um, so yeah, in Machine Talk, they, they talk about what they love about their respective partners, and... I like how mine's a complete asshole to others. Yeah. Fire's, like, all fucking uppity the whole show, and every, every after everyone says the positive thing, he's like, Yeah, well, remember this one time your partner fucked up? <laughs> Trying to, like, be leader? Yeah. yeah remember when your... Hey, remember when your partner got a freaking thing stuck on his head and he cried like a little bitch about it? <laughs> And then, just randomly in the middle of the episode, they just play the fucking Kira Mason theme song completely, like, well, like proper audio, no sound effects in the middle of the music well, video. Like, full-on music yeah. video? Here's a song about Kira Mason, And they just play the whole fucking song, sung by Akira Kushida. Hey, kids. You... So, thank, so thank you for giving me a clear rip of that song, I guess. Hey, kids, you too poor to buy the CD? Yeah. Or too afraid to go outside? Here you go. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, at the end of the, the cut episode special, they tease Cure May Silver, and at the end of Machine Talk episode one, they show, they tease the shiny breaker. <laughs> they tease more so. It's like they had everything ready, and then the invasion happened. They were like, That's exactly what Fuck. happened. Um, so in episode two, they recap Monsters of the Week by way of... A, there was this one monster that Tommy Tomo talked about that was super memorable, but I don't remember which one it was. Let's talk about every one we've ever fought. Ah, shit. <laughs> and apparently at one point they dropped the factoid that Tommy Tomo hates cornflakes, so now I hate him. <laughs> he doesn't like cornflakes. Yeah, right? I mean, cornflakes are plain. Hey, uh, if and, you want cornflakes, just eat special K. And then in this episode, they play the Kira Major's battle theme, Kira May Action. Hey, kids, too poor. I already did that joke. They also go, what was really interesting about this episode is they go over the categories of the Jamenju, like the giant monsters. They recap the kind the kinds there's been. There's been Hildon, Ragani, Shelga, Basra, and Dagames. Diglett, Jaref, Mankey, Venus Over Tata, Firo, Peji, Seek, Get Kip, out. <laughs> Raven's cocking the studio gun. That's broken. You, bro you guys broke my gun. Okay. It was more of just a display. Yeah, thing. It'll work. be it'll that, that, be already. fixed in a fortnight. Yeah. It's already fixed. That was a short night. <laughs> yes, the guns. Now we're gonna have a better night. night. A better night. <laughs> Having a good time. Did you just, someone say better night? Oh, uh, so yeah, not much interesting about those. Uh, the Jamenta Lab is apparently about Carantula teaching Garza about his dark powers, the Jamental. And, uh... Well, that actually they, sounds very important. They established that apparently the Jemenshi are actually evolved mooks, like the Bishats. Oh. Apparently evolve into the Jemenshi. Oh. You, know, you know, that would have been something to actually bring up in the show. Right? Mm -hmm. now, now, if I was going to be told that information in, like, a preview, or, you know, in the episode, I actually would have sat down and paid attention to these. Ooh. Right. But no, they're just. I was just expecting voiceover like clips that we've already seen with no additional information. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the, if you're uh, going to teach me more stuff, I would have actually sat down and watched these. So, uh, according to Carantula, Jamental is powered by three factors. Number one is wrath, just being angry. Um, Number two mm. is hatred, hating someone in particular. Number three, they don't tell us. What's the third rule? There is no third rule. 
<laughs> I don't remember the exact reason, but they don't, like, I think Carancho just says he doesn't know what the third factor is, which means it's going to be, hopefully, something we'll get told later. Mm. Plot relevant. Yeah. <laughs> I'll explain it later. All right, actual episode 11 starts with Tame Tomo playing a tournament match of Tekken 7 against this weird chunibyo ass curse loving hot Not, topic motherfucker. I call him uh, lowercase L. What? L from Death Note. Because um, he sat like L. He certainly took. He certainly had to hold that L. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, the, the whole his whole deal is. He loses real bad, but he's pissed not that he lost, but that Tame Tomo didn't fight him with his main character. He didn't fight me with your main character. didn't take me seriously, and that pisses me off. I will curse you. I wish to be shit-stomped at full force, sir! I wish to be humiliated on the public stage even more! Basically. Alright, who's the next like, guy Tame Tomo's fighting? Who the hell's an Asakura Riku? Oh my god. <laughs> no, but yes, yeah, so I like that they're I like that they're playing Tekken Seven. Just, and, it's uh, just apparently, Tekken Seven. Apparently, yeah. So appar- apparently, apparently, main is uh, Kazuya Mishima from, uh, but he decided for this turn, this battle, he's going to use Panda. What a shit poster! Wait, no, I love it. that. No, that's it. His rival's freaking Goku. He wants you. He wants you to fight him at at your strongest. Well, yeah, and so the the other L dude is fucking playing. Uh, playing I think his name Yoshi was Mitsu. Yoshiro. Yeah, it was Yoshimitsu. He was playing Yoshimitsu. Yeah, and all the scenes felt like it was just a repeat. So after getting his shit kicked, the dude goes up to Tamitomo and rips some of his hair off and puts it in a bottle, going, "I curse you! I curse you!" Vendetta, vendetta. Yeah. Um. So Tamitomo proceeds to go back to the base. And we get this weird little scene where it we we find out that it's Heliko's birthday, and my immediate comment is, wait, the Kirame Stones have different birthdays? Weren't they like created as a set? No. Yes, no. but they all achieve sentience on different days, and that's their birthdays. And Senna's, right. Senna's looking for her wallet. And yeah, it's like how it. Mock, uh, Mock's birthday is the day after Heliko's. Apparently. Yes. So basically, this episode is just. Fucking Groundhog Day. They yeah, they end up fighting a Jimenchi who we learn the name of halfway through the episode. The fucking reset button Jimenchi. Reverse press. <laughs> so he literally just sits there the entire episode. Every time he gets shit stomped by the Kira Majors, he hits the reset button and comes back stronger and more intelligent against them. So it's that least, is a broad definition. So <laughs> it's at least an interesting way of te- of doing the Groundhog Day yeah. uh, scenario. His his logic is if I fight them enough times and keep resetting, I'll know how they fight, so I'll be able to beat them. Yeah. Like, and on, t- but because like within like the beginning of the episode, and who knows how many repeats into this this is at this point, right? Fucking yellow touches the button. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and yellow- that lets him be immune to the effects, but yeah. still get flung backwards. He gets flung back in time every time the reset button happens, but he remembers everything. Yep. Yep. So that's at least interesting. You know, so like, oh, how come he's the only one that knows? It's like, oh, because he's the one. He accidentally pressed the button. Yeah, I, I, that, that's as good as an explanation as we're going to get with a plot like this. He doesn't this. have to keep pressing the button, he just remains immune. Yeah. I guess. Because time. Because well, I, like at, I like at one point, freaking really just... He, he, tries to shoot, he tries to shoot him and it doesn't work, and then just fucking Shigeru just comes with a sword, just... <laughs> and fucking cuts that's him out. That's No, I, I mean, established, like, we're 11 episodes in, Shigeru is my, is my favorite hero major. I just... Slash he, He's great. Tommy should have just told Shigeru to slice his fucking hand off so he couldn't hit the button. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, no, because he no, but even they the damaged yeah, the button. But even but when the even when works. the button got broken, it still worked. No, but the point is, if he'd cut off his hand, he wouldn't have been able to hit it. True, but it. I feel like he, he just was like fell ran, over. And yeah, he just fell like, over and just his cut, button. I was gonna say, cut to just him without his arm. He just like 
yeets himself onto the ground to just slam yeah. the button against the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so the funniest one is where like he goes back and he's just like, Santa, here's your wallet. And she's like, what? what? How, how'd you know it was happy birthday? I'll go, oh, you know, it's my birthday. Yeah, we're bringing in a cake. Oh, man, you ruined the fucking surprise. By the way, there's a monster in F-79. <laughs> what? Oh, there's a monster yeah. in F-79. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, how do you know all this? It's like, oh. I relived uh, it. Yeah, I relived Been this here, thing done that. And I love that on. on several versions, Jewel just immediately believes him. And other people are like, wow, this is a fucking lean joke, dude. <laughs> I also just like how it's not like he's getting like confused or he's like, oh my goodness, this day is just never going to end. No, it's just like, he actually ends up getting pissed off a bit, Tommy Tommy, because he's like, I keep, he's not getting pissed off yeah, that. No matter what I do, this shit keeps repeating and I just gotta fucking sit here and take it. How yeah, fuck no, you I, I love that the guy. first time no, the loop happened, that's... he thought it was because he got cursed. Yeah, that's not it though. He's upset because he knows it's just going to get reset, yep. and none of them care. None of them are, are affected by it. So of course like, they don't care. They don't know what's happening. So why is not he tell them, hey, you guys should press the button because, to truth so that you yeah, know? Well, that you never know on that one. I, don't, I just think it was a case of he didn't realize that he was immune because he pressed the button. It told him. The monster flat out said it the minute he started talking about how it's been multiple times now. Yeah. But the fuck are you? You wait, you know? You're immune. Oh, it's because you touched that button that time. Yeah. So, yeah, so he goes to, like, fight other L, and he's like, okay, let's do a proper match, I'll fight with my main. And so he beats she, him, she no fucking him. problem. Perfect. Perfect as Kazuya, so... As he should. And then he, in the midst of doing that, comes up with probably the most, the best solution I have ever fucking heard of for a situation like this. He's gonna get so far ahead of the loop... That the monster, the monster just loops literally, quicker and quicker. He's going to fuck, basically return to sender. I'm going to every time you come back, I'm going to just rip you a new asshole <laughs> over and over and over and over until the monster literally just said, "No, no, fuck this shit. I'm done. No, you can have my button. Take it. <laughs> I'm quit I'm out. Bye. 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 I quit the Yodon army. I'm not gonna try to conquer the world. Uh, I just. I'm done! I'm out! I just can't believe <laughs> that this happened in Sentai history. They fought a monster to the point where he's like... It you know, gives up! Yeah, it, it gives up. He just, he pulls the button out of his head, which is cute how it's just like... It's There's like, a groove in his yeah, head. Yeah, just a groove in his head. Just gives it to Tommy Tommy. He's like, I'm going home. It's yours. I'm, I'm gone. Like, <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> You it's win. Like, it's, just, it's, just, game, it's just, it's just, it's just Aaron, Aaron from the finale of Battle Kid. No, I'm done. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. Reversal. I come to Bach. Or just or, yeah, that's the thing. I was saying like I was a Doctor Strange. They eventually loop so quickly and so many times that I'm just like I just look over the guys and it's just like no. reset button, Javinci. I've come to Bach. It's also just funny because he just keeps. Like, he thinks of clever ways, he's like, ah, shield. It's just like... Loads yeah, he, of, like, he comes it. out of one of the loops just with a fucking shield out of nowhere. And at nowhere. one point, Sh <laughs> Shavello goes bullpup. like, he showed up with fucking combat gear, like an army fucking bulletproof vest and a body armor. <laughs> then he come, that still got shot, still got shot in a weak point. But, but when fucking he got... comes back in a full suit of fucking plate armor. Didn't he, like, shout out Kipong? Yeah. yeah. Point? yeah Shavello, Kipong. Just Kipong! Because remember, everyone... Uh, Re Soldier versus Lip Pat versus uh, Lipid Ranger versus Pat Ranger came out. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's just like yeah, and he, some shit happened in that movie that didn't look very good. Again, he brings the mooks as like a barrier shield, like Tommy Gunn shoots me. them from the sky. Yeah, I love that. Eventually, we start seeing him rolling in in the Zord, and I was just like, "Yes, run him over!" But, but I just love how like the monster just comes in, gets stand up, and, and he's just like. He's like, oh, oh watch out, everyone! Like, he, like he's like being terrified. But by the time he's just been killed so many times, he's just walking. Yeah, he's just walking no. in, like, oh, like, you know, shoulders over his head. He's like, I don't know. No, I don't you care. know what? You know what? Here's the button. I don't care. I'm, I'm done. Out. I'm out. Bye. Here, take this. I don't think I've ever Go seen home. this kind of d d victory <laughs> so, in Sentai. So then, like, he walks by guards. The guards just like, where the fuck do you think you're going? He's like, I'm, I'm, going I'm, I'm done. Oh I'm no, done. you're fucking not. I quit. I'm out of the army. But goodbye. I'm going oh, home to my. Don't. I'm going home to my wife and family. 
Where they're all just the same mooks. Yeah. And just tiny mooks with like a bow. Yeah. And like, like a tiny mook with a baseball hat. So yeah, Gar- Garza fucking slashes them. They turn him into a giant fucking monster. No, 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 no. <laughs> he straight, Garza straight up murders him for his defiance. And then the dark insurance policy kicks in. And Carantula manages to kick out into the real world. The, the, the launch button Rigani. Those, those who are in the Yodan army die. No one leaves Yodan army. <laughs> yeah. So the giant monster is the launch button Rigani. A big dinosaur with a nuclear weapon button for a face. Hey, I've seen dinosaurs strapped with space technology from Ultraman. I've seen worse. They literally have a sequence where the rangers are rushing to deal with it as it is slowly moving its finger towards the button on its face. I'm gonna press it! You better stop me! Ooh, what does this button do? No, please, do not push the so button! To, so to defeat him, Kira Mason just hops on top of the fucking Machine Express and they treat it like it's a new combination! Sure is! And Surfing just, on a train! Yeah! Just gives him a fucking drive-by train to. <laughs> oh my god, it was so dumb! Oh, See? Man. This is actually the first episode of this show I've actually watched. Oh no. I, I promise it's better than this. <laughs> it's like, this isn't promising. <laughs> it's better than this, I swear. Oh, at least tell you this. The writer of this episode hasn't written any other episodes of the show. Okay. And Thank apparently, God. And apparently, according to Ranger Wiki, the only other like credentials he has for Super Sentai is two random episodes of Q Ranger. Why are we letting this man write for the show then? We need no a, one else wanted to. We need a filler writer because the head writer's probably writing uh, what fun, the next preview is, which is silver. It was a fun filler, though. Fun? Eh. I think there should. It that. was funny seeing the 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 monster of the week just give up. That, that was, was fun. That was the only funny part. That was the best. Uh, like the whole like the whole point with the other gamer guy didn't really. No, Connect that didn't with, go nowhere. I'll agree like, like, it went nowhere. Also, I would like to po- take this moment to point out that his whole going back and giving the guy a proper match technically didn't happen because they reset time and he never did that again. <laughs> so he quit pro gaming? Yeah, Hooray! So, so, so that whole little side plot never actually happened. Here, here's how you fix that. Here's how you fix it. Monster grows, like Monster Grow Bigs, it has the same repeat button. They defeat it, it explodes, but then, like, Tommy Toma wakes up in bed, or, like, he wakes up in his room, wait, ready to, uh, ready to fight the guy. Oh, so they just actually redo the day for the last time. Yeah. So, like, right before he dies, he presses the button when it explodes. Here's the real question, though. The monster, the Jamenchi, gave Tommy Tomo the button... We better see will, that button again. Will we see it again? I want it to be brought I want, up again. I want there to just be, like, either at the end of the show or, like, midway through that just some shit happens, the rangers get completely fucked over, like, the city is in ruins. Yeah. And Tommy Toe is just sitting there, like... Hey, what I still have. Like, pulls out the button, just like, Hey, man, what's that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, no. You want, no. You know what they do? Everyone hang on to me. Oh, he takes them with him. Yeah, yeah. that way they all. It's like, what's that? It's like, oh, when we bought one, when we fought one of the monsters, he gave me this. And then you know what they can do? They can use that duplication dummy thing that they have to oh, make the a new you plan to the fight worst this part what? Just watch, hits the button, entire show resets to this episode. Oh, no! <laughs> him and Senna are just about to kiss. Like that oh, one is the Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh, no, I saw that. Right? I'm like, oh, my God, it's awful! Right? <laughs> Rick and Morty, it rips your fucking heart out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the director of this episode did episodes five and six. So that's, oh boy. Woo! That's pretty much about that. All I can say about that. Oh uh, my. So next week is the debut of Kira May Silver, as they've been so kind to shove in our faces. I'm excited to see this dude. Do you see him yet? Yes, I see. Him. Do you see? <laughs> just, just all. Can you imagine all the Kirame Silver merch at stores be like, who the fuck's this? Right. Just tosses it. Just put it on the bargain bin. He was supposed to be out by now. Oh, sweet. It's Avengers. 
joke. Freaking Seven. No jokes. Avengers from Ultraman Z have been selling out more than the actual hero. Fun. The 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 robot knockoff Wally is selling out more than Ultraman. I mean, he deserves it. He's fucking amazing. Look at look look at look at this boy. Okay. Look at that. Ah. That's awesome. It looks like it, it's the, my favorite robot kaiju in this fucking looks show. Looks like a rejected Star Wars droid. I could see him popping in like no, Jabba's palace. I was, my favorite for the longest time has been King Joe, but this guy fucking beats him excuse now. Excuse me. What if I don't? No, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. We're all burpy today. It's a burp kind of day. <gasps> ah. Bart. 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 Eggs for Bart. Bart, I need more character development, Bart. Bart, what is my character arc? More eggs. Apparently, X will escape me. Speaking of character arcs, let's get into our feature topic. So, guard. Or should I say. Oh, Greetings, uh, everyone! Damn it! Uh, to all that are listening to this, for those who may not know, I am Aka Yellow, the Cast Ranger's very own Super Sentai guy to all that is about Super Sentai. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you, Aki Yellow. After all this mishap that was with Caster, you leaving for the North Pole, giving me a note. Such an honor to have you back. No problem, Gold Caster Griza. So, what Super Sentai season are we talking about this episode? Live Man. Live Man? Why, that's one of my favorite seasons! I could go on forever about. Oh, what, one moment, my phone's ringing. <laughs> Hello? You're joking! Yes, sir! Yes, sir, I'll be right there! I'm terribly sorry, guys. Uh, I just got a call from my agent, Aka Green. Uh, he just got me a gig to do this movie. Wait, one of your teammates is your agent? Don't question it. Okay. Uh, but don't worry, I'll be back for the next Super Sentai Tribute episode! Away! Oh, thank God he's gone. Well, at least we know Aka Green's in our multiverse. But yes, we are once again talking about my personal favorite Super Sentai season from the 1980s, Choju Sentai Life Man. So, so we talked about this Sentai previously, but that was one of the very few episodes where I was not present. You know, uh, yes. Apparently I was, so, so I do not remember fuck all about that. Yes, uh, some of you may recall that we've talked about Life Man before way back in June of 2018 in episode 201, Don't Fist Bump the Zord. <laughs> uh, for those that haven't seen Life Man, uh, here, here's a brief synopsis. We have an actual plot! Yes. Uh, the story revolves around three students from the Space Academy uh, being the only survivors from the attack of the Brain Army Volt. Yusuke as Red Falcon. Brain Fal Army. <laughs> Yusuke as Red Falcon. Army. Joe as Yellow Lion. And Megami as Blue Dolphin use their powers that they created themselves to become Choju Sentai Life Man. Let me just say that the Blue Ranger looks suspiciously like an older version of Misora from Build. She does! Yeah, a bit. Yeah. So yes, a Live Man written by Hiroshi Soda. Uh, it, at the time of release, it marked the tenth season of the franchise since at the time both Go Ranger and Jacka were not considered a part of the franchise. And for being the tenth season, it was written to include things that they've never done before in the franchise, such as plot, a female Blue Ranger, combined weapons, and today's storyline, the inclusion of new Rangers. This marked the first time ever in the in the franchise to include additional Rangers throughout the show's run, and it was all planned ahead of time thanks to toy releases. It was also the first time where multiple robots combined, was it not? It was, and it was also the first time where Green and Black were on the same team together. So many firsts. Fuck yeah, this show took a lot. Well, it was the tenth season. We gotta do things that we've never done before. That's true. Pers personal stakes with the villain? Sure. Female Blue Ranger? Why not? Robot Mentor? We've had that twice beforehand, but... Oh, it's not a talking dog. Talking dog or a chibi robot? I'm pretty dude. sure I saw a dog on a skateboard in one of the openings, though. Yeah. And that dog is never in the show. It's then just why? Because dog. Because people like dogs. Dogs. Dogfish. 
Every week they'll turn in walk why were asking they, why where's why the were dog? They, why were they swimming with dolphins in the ocean? Because live with that. Uh, first, because Blue Ranger's a dolphin. I guess. Oh yeah, first time the mech and the ranger team have a unified uh, motif, which is animals. Because maybe our f- show about costumed heroes should have some goddamn congruency with its suits and its mechs. Maybe not just be a bunch of jets and tanks combining into one giant robot. Right? Oh my god, when we get to live box, they're going to make some fucking complaints about it. So yeah, uh, last week we mentioned it was going to be episodes 29 and 30. Then I remembered it's a three-parter, so we're talking about episodes 28, 29, and <laughs> I 30. thought at first that that was suspicious, because I'm like, we usually talk about three episodes, why are we talking about two? So, because but, we must suffer! No, it's not suffering, it's... It's a joke, I enjoyed yeah, it. No, um, yeah, no, so the, these three episodes we watched, they're, they're pretty, pretty intense, like, I just like that like, it just kept... Ongoing, like you just end with like, oh, they're in trouble, and then the next one just okay, we're back where we are, where, where we were. So, so like that. So yeah, this. Thank you for bringing that up. Or we'll bring that up later. <laughs> later. We'll talk later. So this three-parter was about a enemy giant robot called Gigavolt. Yeah, it's a it, so um. Kyber three. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely what I was saying the second it came out of the ground. You like, fucking wait. wait. What? Even I, did a, even did a mega smasher. It fucking fired like a beam out of its chest. I saw it and I thought it looked like fucking Polluticorn. It reminded Fuck's me. What's a Polluticorn? Watch Mighty Morphin. Oh. It reminded me a bit of uh, Hang on. the the, <laughs> the, the f- like the end of the first season of Power uh, the first season of Mighty Morphin, or like the end of Zoo Ranger, the white like crystal mech thing. No, just me. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so so yeah. three heroes are being chased. They they spend most of this episode unhinged. Like they spend a lot oh of time. Oh my god! Right? Doesn't it kind of look similar? Kind of. Like mold wise, right? Kinda. So yeah, uh, we get a lot of names and people thrown at us, especially considering this is my first time watching the show. Mine too. You were on the episode we talked about last Yeah, week. I didn't watch I the episode. Sh- I literally, I think I showed up like five minutes prior to you guys recording and just went, yeah, okay. But like, all you need to know is that they lived on an island that had like the smartest and brightest people in the world. A uh, fucking ship colony was launched into space and then it got shot down by this giga volt thing, gig volt, whatever, uh, army baiting. Brain army vault. Yeah, fucking crashed into the island, killing yeah, fucking and, everybody. And one of these episodes actually included a flashback, so we got to see it. It yeah. was pretty, pretty disturbing. Full on massacre. Yeah, yeah, fucking colony drop. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So they're like the the live men are pretty much fucked, and uh, until oh the mysterious sword shows up, the bison liner. Yes, the bison. I love how it's got a mask sticking off of the back of it. Gee, I wonder if that's going to be used in some sort of combination. So, so I do have a minor complaint about green and black, and that is their mechs. I think, outside of the, like, in your face, like, oh, look, this is going to be an attachment for the combiner. I actually liked the tanky designs of their Zord, because it makes sense for a bison Zord and a rhino Zord to be, like, tanky. Well, yeah, but it's like when you compare them to like live robos, like three separate combinations. They're at least like more animal themed, and then just yeah. But the idea slap, was like slap the animal head onto like a transport. Truck. But I like the idea that they're different because these are two separate teams with two different. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do, I do understand what you mean. Where where it's it's kind of like the Hurry Kenders and the Go Riders. Exactly. Like two separate, literally. Hurry Kenger was based on Live Man, just with ninjas. Oh boy. Like, literally, Falcon, do- Dolphin, Lion, oh. two additional Rangers later on. Yeah. And they combine, like, almost the same way. All of which have horns. All of which have horns. All of which have horns. Uh, seven gen. Oh my goodness, Hurry Kenger does have a lot in common with Live Man. It's weird. Huh. Live Man was also the Super Sunday that aired in 1988, the year I was born. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, these episodes aired during September 3rd to September 17th on, wait, sa- on Saturday. Wait, to be in September? Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I always thought Sentai usually like, sh- showed up in like, January, February, so... 
Well, these no, these episodes, are when these episodes aired. Oh. Because these are episodes 28, 29, 30. Okay. The, the, show only, the show only ran for 49 episodes. That's still pretty long for a Sentai. Yeah. So, like, after these guys showed up, they kind of went straight into the final arc. Oh. But, yeah, so episode 28 is mostly about the introducing the Bison Liner and his pilot, Tetsu, who's a loud and hard-headed mem- uh, character who is out for revenge for... Reasons we eventually find out are quite related to the main team. Which is pretty interesting to learn. Yeah, it, it, it's good. this show has a good amount of the heroes have personal stakes. That was my biggest problem with a lot of the other Showa Sentai we've seen. Like, they just get introduced and they're already a Sentai and they're a task force and they have no personal reason to be here. We're, mili- uh, we're military people who just kind of got pulled into this. Well, Yay! Here's the reason behind that, Ichi. Different head writer. Yeah. Because all the other classic Sentais I've shown you were written by either Shozu O'Hara or, um, I can't remember the guy that wrote Jetman, but for, from 1982 to 1991, each season was written by only one, one guy. Wow. That's fucking great. Ten seasons alone. Wow. But I will say that over the course of these three episodes, I love... The fucking choreography of the robot fights because Live Robo gets tossed the fuck around. I will say we got this really cool fucking animation of like him summoning his sword. That was fucking awesome. Oh, the flame sword. Yeah. yeah. It kind of reminds me of Voltron a bit when like Voltron yeah, yeah, puts yeah. His swords together. And there was a lion in there. And fucking yeah. Gigabolt stops the Hisatsu. That was fucking cool. He stopped the finisher. That's how you know. That's how you know a Mexican oh, box. Yeah, he like breaks it, their sword. It, it's like, uh oh, the villain fucking A has a giant monster in the fir- immediately as the episode starts. B stopped the he sots in its tracks in the first five minutes. Of, oh, the Megazord's getting fucking trashed this episode, yep. isn't it? <laughs> yep. Okay, there it is. What yep. time is it? It's not past ten. Oh my goodness, it's gonna get blown up. It almost oh, no, it did. Got, it got captured. I love how they, they spend so much time just, like, tossing the Zord around for lulls, and then they just put it in this, like, floating capture ring and don't like, really oh, do anything. man, with. maybe we should have destroyed it when we had the fucking chance! Or, you know, actually captured it and taken it away or something. Right, instead but, of just leaving it floating in the giant floaty ring. Right? But, that, but then there would be no more show. No, but the fucking box robot could have come back and <laughs> saved the robo. So, uh, let, let's talk about some of the villains. Uh, so, the person piloting uh, piloting the Gigavolt... At first, at least. Yeah, at first, was Dr. Kemp. Dr. Kemp! He was one, yeah. he was one of the students that betrayed uh, the live man team in, to join Professor Bias. Oh, uh, yes, and the leader is Professor Bias. Which some of you may recognize... Quite biased. Yeah. Some of you may recognize him as Tank Joe from Ryu Soldier. Oh shit! To think he went from general, like leader, to Did... fucking Tank Joe. Wow! But he was Giro in, in Sergeant Frog. Oh. Professor Bias. Yes. Be, be. It's just funny because in Sergeant Frog they did a Sentai theme episode, and one of the characters was dressed up as Professor Bias. I um, wanted to see more Gus, but he just doesn't do anything. Yeah, anymore. that robot with the fucking actual screen eyes was pretty rad looking. Yeah, Gus was cool. Didn't His name what? is Gus. Oh. Um, oh, he was Rosh uh, Gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah just... Orb just brought that up, and I was like, oh! Okay, cool. he went from leader oh, yeah, of that is that organization, Roshiro, to fucking Tank Joe. Hey, Roshiro's a step up. I, well, that's why I was like, uh, uh, bam. Yeah. Freaking nose diving. Hey, I, I also like Tank Joe. Hey, Tank Joe could have been better. Anyway, um, yeah. So episode 28 is about Live Robo getting fucked and Bison Liner shows up and we meet Tetsu. We also get to see their fucking fembot-ass robot mentor... Who looks like she was the inspiration for things like Wagon and Raptor. Probably. She looks like someone roboticized Chun-Li. Kind of. Got the little hair buns, yeah. Yep. Uh, what the fuck was her name? Colon? Yeah, Colon. Yeah, Colon. What an unfortunate name. And the worst part is she doesn't end up dying. So, <laughs> the, damn, Gar. The, <laughs> doesn't wow. Happen. You know, Damn. You know, if this was a modern tokusatsu show... She may be a robot with no emotions, but that was cold. Uh, well, 
Yeah. Think of it this way. If this, <laughs> if this show was made in, like, 2019, you know she that... She probably would have actually been sacrificed so her power core would become part of the new Megazord. I yeah. mean, the way the episodes went, that certainly looked like how... The direction in which they were heading, because yeah. she was, like, screaming and sparking and a, and a lot. So... Yeah, they, they, they hook her up to one of the machines so that she can power it because there's circuit breaks. Oh, they're A1 circuit break. Just get a, some a, uh, A1 sauce. It's pretty fine. Yeah. Uh, it's like the one, the, one, the, the, one in the, the one in the Bison Zord fucking uh, got destroyed. Then, they, then the fucking robot mentor brought a second one, which then got shot out of their hands. Yeah, because yep. you know, the rangers forgot, oh right, the generals were just right there ganging it's up like, on oh, this. Right. We're, we're <laughs> being hunted right so now. So then we huh. see, we see, we see uh, Kemp or whatever transform into his like, monster form. He becomes Be- a furry. Beauty Beast Kemp. And he unleashes, which we can all agree is probably the coolest technique that a villain, <laughs> a bad guy, could ever use. The beautiful rainbow technique. Which is a rainbow that shoots lightning. Real Real lightning. God. (laughs) Okay, who's showing Kaiju Booska? Uh, Super Eyes official YouTube channel. Cool. Booska. Barney of Ultraman. Episode 29 starts off with showing us the other new Zord, uh, Psy Fire, which is the green rhino. Because Psy in Japanese is rhino. Yeah. And I love it. The, we we see we meet his pilot Junichi, and the first thing that happens is Tetsu going up and punching the fucking shit out of him because he was a whole episode late. Yeah, You're late. And you know why he was late? I never learned to drive. Yeah, he's, I don't know how to drive this thing. Yeah, it's fucking Justin. Yeah, yeah, he's the youngest of the team. He doesn't know how to drive. Good thing Alpha I don't have my license yet. Good it's thing too- Colin gave me a crash course in driving. Because these two were giving me, like, fucking go on your vibes. Because they remind me of green and black. From Who do you here. think they're inspired from? Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't catch that immediately because black wasn't immediately a totally insufferable bastard. Even after he punched his... No, he's weapon. just reckless as... No, but he yeah. did pu- He did go, like, show up in his Zord. He was just like, he's oh, like, my oh, sword's oh. better than your fucking mech. I was gonna say, I will say that he was like, you live men suck ass at this. Yeah, I'm gonna be, do it. Okay, I, I need to be a live man. If only I was a live man. <laughs> you're a live man. No, oh, you're, a dead, God, you're a dead man when I'm done with you. Yeah. You're gonna be a change man when I'm done with you. So, yeah, we we see a live boxer in this episode. Now, when I heard that there was going to be a robot named Live Boxer, can you imagine what I envisioned? Probably Big Fist. I imagined that it would be a boxing robot that had the the rhino face on one hand and the bison face on the other hand. That would be cool. And it would be punching with them. But no! Instead, we got a literal ass box with limbs. And this is where my complaint comes in. So when you see like the standing shot of it, of live box being complete, you can see he's like a giant wide ass fucking box for like a body. But then as soon as you see the suit actor in the robot suit, he yeah, fucking slim the fuck down. It's a lot thinner once the actual suit shows like, up. Like my oh. goodness, I just couldn't get over how it's just a real ass box. Uh, like, <laughs> Life boxer. If, if anyone's curious, that's, that's a boxer. It. It's yeah. just it's just a box with legs. Another box. Oh my it's God. got arms too, itchy. So like you can you can barely tell. So you can see that you can see that, and then this is this is the sued actor one. You can clearly tell it's slimmer. Night and day. Come on, guy. Like, it looks like, like the Delta Mega. I get it. It's so that because the suit actor wouldn't be able to move so well if it was that wide. I would love wide. to see them try though. I'm like. <laughs> 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 I am Life Boxer. Hear me roar. I'm Life Boxer. I can't reach my arms. <laughs> I'm Life Boxer. I can't bend over at all. Help. Help. I'm a Life Boxer and I can't get up. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, what, what happens when fucking Life Boxer falls on his ass? He's just gonna did, be like, you, ah. you did see him fall on his ass. Multiple and, times. And Life Robo came in and be like, Come on, I'll take you home. Yeah, so yeah, they, he actually walks him out of the battlefield. They managed to get Live Robo out of this floating capture ring, and then the two Megazords just walk each other off set. And leave the fucking giant enemy robot that Attached. has been terrorizing <laughs> them for two episodes completely prone and free for attack. 
<laughs> but but you know. just lay, leave it floating there and don't bother with it <laughs> at all. Oh, no. <laughs> He's been through enough. <laughs> And they just get a different general to pilot it, and it starts destroying cities. Oh, yes, uh, Professor um, I, Ashura. Yeah, Ashura. The, so he showed up um, in like the earlier episodes. He was so dumb, he could only count to ten. <laughs> but he was like a street punk, so like he had like. And now spunk. he looks like fucking Jiraiya. Well, that's because Professor Bias is like, I like your strength. Let me give you a super brain. And then, super and, brain. and then we saw, yeah. and then we they saw are the like, brain army. And then we saw like this pair of aliens that I'm pretty sure were the inspirations for Squat and Babu later on. Yes, so. those... that fucking orange goblin is on goddamn roller skates in the credits. Yeah, that, that's him. <laughs> oh so my they, god, the comic relief. So think yeah, of it. Squat and Babu. So think of it. You have you have Professor Bias, the three students, but one of them ends up leaving. You have Ashura, Gus. And the two, and the two aliens. That's seven villains. Yeah. Do you think that's enough? <laughs> no. No. We need, we need three more to, to even it out. And also, Ashura can summon Boonshins, which are literally just the misfits from Gem and the fucking Star or what? Shadow Clone from Gem. <laughs> Gem and the holograms. That's it. Um, Look at their wigs. It's just the misfits. Yeah, that's it. We are the misfits. Our mooks are better. <laughs> we are the misfits. Our so, mooks are better. <laughs> so they, they all decide to go back to Grand Tortoise, their headquarters. Which we only got like a half second shot of. I wanted to see more of that. Yeah, it's a giant mech tortoise. I think it looked pretty rad. That's under. That's underwater. Yeah. That that way they can't. Yeah. So Tetsu, and what's it's his face? It's never in the same place twice. They're like, yeah. they're like, oh, you guys fucking suck. We still want to back revenge. We're gonna steal your mech and fucking try to fight him. Yeah. So they, they like steal they steal live Robo. Fucking wrong. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You're gonna get yourselves fucking killed. Being dicks. That is Gunpei. So, well, they do have the horns for it. Yeah. yeah so then, like, they meet. One of them's a green horn. Yeah, so then Colin, Colin's like, "Oh, I'll help you guys power your more your your mech up or whatever." Because oh, that was think, the previous episode. Yeah, but like, I love that like they 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 acted as if they knew Colin for like a long time. And they actually gave a shit. It's like you guys known her for like five minutes. She arrived in the live cougar, <laughs> which is a fucking jeep. Yeah, it's a jeep. It's a freaking amazing jeep. That so okay. Here's the weird thing about Tetsu and uh, Junichi. Uh, yeah, Junichi. They're the younger siblings of the two friends from the very first episode that were killed by Ken. Again, personal stakes. Excellent. Yeah. So it, it at least has some sort of connection. Some people complain about like, oh, if they if they were their siblings and they had this technology, why didn't they show up at the very beginning? Because Green doesn't know how to drive. And my response is, who the fuck cares? It's inter it's better to have an interesting storyline halfway through the story. They spend all that extra time building their swords, maybe. Yeah. Like, like... Who's to say they're as good at building as the others are? Like, also think of it, they're younger than you guys, so they don't know this technology. Yeah. It's space technology in the 1980s. We don't know shit. Yeah, they weren't the Academy students. They were related to the Academy students. Yeah. Also, apparently, the younger, younger brother of... Like, Black Bison, the younger brother, built the live cougar. Ah. It's all connected. It's, everything's just connecting together. It's just that shot from Sunny, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, full of papers. Yeah, Pepe Silva. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Tetsu and Junichi steal live Robo, and they shit the bed at piloting it. And then they just leave and go to Academia Island and dig up this supercomputer. Oh, it's a supercomputer that somehow survived. Of course, the villains follow them there, because why wouldn't they? Because we're idiots. It's not like they just left the scene of a fucking fight and went <laughs> straight there. Do they oh, do this often? Because that's twice. Yeah. They're, they're, they're idiots. They sometimes. just leave the battles, yeah. battle site before they finish it yeah, off. Yeah, so they find out the supercomputer is still fucking for people around. Who are so, for people who are so smart, they sure are dumb. Yeah. But uh, they, they use the supercomputer to come up with the combination of the two mechs. Oh yeah, uh, super live, super live Robo. Man, those renders. <laughs> Man, that blue. Like, I even like how they question it. It's like, 
what the hell is this? It's like, uh, it was just in the blueprints, I don't know. So they wait until this point when they've finished designing their combined Megazord for the Red Ranger to just go over to Tetsu and Junichi, give them a slap on the wrist, and BAM! They've got Morphers! I was like, come on. And I was sitting there like, okay, what the fuck? And then I was just like, I had the, I asked Gar about it, and apparently they, like, the, the three main live men designed their own fucking morphers and powers, so literally he just built them too. I guess. I and I was just like, okay, that makes a lot more sense than, poof, magic bracelet, right? <laughs> That's the you're alive, man! Don't, don't, you're don't, alive, don't, man! That's the title of the episode. Poof, magic race. <laughs> sure. I've seen worse I, uh, explanations for Rangers can, getting can their powers. Can we please have the thumbnail just be do- uh, Dr. Kemp just on the rainbow? Yeah, That was fucking great. And have it in front of an actual colony drop from Gundam. <laughs> you're going to have to send me an image. I will find yeah. you an image. Right. There, there's a nice high-quality photo of Brain Army Vault. Hey. Yeah, yeah, there's seven of these bastards. <laughs> Look at all of them. And they live seven. in... Seven! Seven bastards! They live in space! Well, yeah. It looked like they just stole the set of the moon base from Power Rangers. Where do you think uh, got the so idea cool! Of? His name's Gus. <laughs> I actually Gus. love that he had, like, an actual screen for an eye. I want more of him. I want to see more of him. Oh, he's freaking cool when he actually gets to do shit. Yeah, it also looks like the fucking Dark Moon Kingdom. <laughs> so, wait, what's that picture of, like, Dr. Bias in, like, a graduation uniform? Wait, which one? Uh, like, uh, if you click on the picture, like, it, there's a black and white picture of, like, I think Dr. Yeah. Bias, like, in a graduation so, outfit. Uh, well, he is a professor. He is a professor. And it does kind of lead <laughs> into a bit of spoilers. He graduated from fucking space college! Why is that? What? 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 You're finding the colony drop image? Oh, I'm looking them up and I'm just, oh wow, some of the fucking shit that popped up on the related image search. Oh no! Do we want to know? Oh no, it's... No, I'll send it to you. Because we'll I'm, se- I'm probably going to tell you to use the one of our t- uh, one I'm staring at right now more than the okay. actual one. Ooh. So that's the actual picture. Okay. And then that happens. <laughs> Okay, so, I gotta so, see this. So yeah, words. so yeah, the re- um, use case, yeah, use case, just like, all right, kid, you're alive, man. Now you're a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we get our first look at their five man henchmen and roll call: Red Falcon, Black Bison, Green Sai, Yellow Lion, and Blue Dolphin. Because of course, the females still last. Yep. Well, oh, they do. They do change it. Oh. So it's. Red, yellow, blue, black, green. Oh, okay. It's cool. just since they since it's their first transformation, it's like they add them in. Sure. And uh, they're they're pretty cool. Like Green Rhino actually like uses his, his head a lot to like just, butt enemies. Oh, that's cool. using your head. Just look at these suits. They're pretty cool suits. I, I I don't know why, but I'm just so drawn to the dolphin helmet. I love it. I love their weapons too. Their weapons are pretty neat. Like the blue one's got a fucking bow and arrow, which is neat. Lion's got a bazooka. Just, what does Lion get? Bazooka. Bazooka! Fucking gun. <laughs> yeah, fucking gun. Who got you and gun? according to this image that we're using for our wallpaper, green gets boomerangs? Yep. That's rad. What's black got? I can't tell. Uh, it's a uh, bow staff. Oh, cool. cool. And of course, red's got a sword. Yep. Oh, it was cool earlier where it's like, oh, someone's coming into the base. Freaking uh, Yusuke like, pulls up his morpher just to teleport himself a blaster. Yeah. It's like... That's cool. Just, he used his own morpher. Like, don't morph. Just send me a gun. I feel like that was the inspiration for the tele- the transpod from Go Trans- You know? Yeah. Like, so and and what's cool about this being the episode where Green and Black debut? When the ending happens, they've immediately updated it to include them. Yeah, and then the opening actually introduces this shot here. Cool. So so they ride in the live cougar while they ride in their motorcycles. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, so obviously the feature at the end of the episode is the actual combination of the two robots, Super Live Robo. Yay. Which is pretty rad. Super Live Robo. He's so cool. And then, at the end of that episode, even though we've seen Green and Black and nothing but their, like, mechanic jumpsuits the whole episode, now we see they actually have their own color-coded civilian outfits, finally. Yeah, and Green wears white suspenders. 
Yeah. Uh, if you didn't get a good shot of it in the episode, this is what it looks like. Which, it, it's an alright combination. I think it's pretty good. Makes the mech look taller. Yeah. Well, it's made of two robots, so it damn well better. It's got box feet. And it, uh, for one of the b- most bizarre reasons, according to the Japanese Wikipedia page, one of the inspirations was Saint Seiya. What? Why? It, you know, it's just, like, adding armor to, like, the robot. I it's, guess. I guess I like it's, it's not my favorite, but, like, it's it's neat. It's pre- I think it's pretty good. I like the shoulders on them. Yeah, right? Hey, where did these go? There we go. I'm done for today. Where's my paycheck? Although I am surprised that they didn't make them fists. He's like got, he's got box feet. Why have <laughs> I said that already? Yeah. What? What? Why have fists when you have laser cannon out of chest? Because you can have laser vi- lasers out hey, of. Hey, at one point you can see like the the lion on the chest just being like. Rawr. 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 Yeah. Uh. And yeah, that's like they're like they have like civilian clothes now, and then it's just like, hey, you're one of us, let's do a hand thing, yay, Power Rangers, live <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> so we're not gonna watch it, at least not yet. But apparently, the next episode is about Junichi becoming pregnant. It's pregnant. <laughs> oh no! First day as second day as a ranger, and I end up pregnant. This is why they say Rangers. Wow. Can't I feel date I feel each like other. we I feel like we need to do like a theme month next year where it's just like we watch like the most fucked up Sentai episodes. L- like the what the fuck did Exactly. I, I feel like Gar, you will not disappoint us with that. Vega baby. Maybe anything Showa, Heisei, current Sentai, like whatever. Even episodes we've watched already, like it's just for no, 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 I'll probably pick something that we haven't seen. It's best if we do stuff we haven't seen. No. Increase our coverage, you know? <laughs> Expand the horizons. <laughs> for the discussion index. <laughs> just, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> just going through the list, be like... Um, it was it was very enjoyable to see Watch More Live Man, because, like, this, this show looks just fucking great. Oh, like the, it has that, has that real, like, 80s feel to it, and it's just so good. It's so awesome. It, it belongs. Like, in, it belongs in the holy trilogy of the finale of the 80s. You have 1986 with Matilda. You have 1987 with Common Rider Black. Yep. And then with 1988, you have Life Man. Cool. All three franchises. Yeah, you, well, should, you should watch. You should watch like the first like two episodes and just see like this entire fucking island just get. Destroyed Everybody all dies. these dead people. Uh, I mean, we saw in the flashback. Oh, yeah. No, but um, it's you get more right context into it. Uh, okay. Interesting fact: the teacher is uh, the teacher that died, unfortunately, in the first two episodes. He was actually um, Android Kikider. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So he was second battle Kosak. Nice Neat. little connections. But yeah, I, I was. I was happy to come back to this after, what, seven years? years? Like seven years after watching it? So as long as it's been since we started the podcast. Yeah. Like, that's how long ago I like it's been since I've seen Live Man. Yeah, and you watched it, you were just like... Oh. I was like, dude, this is like the greatest no. Sentai of all time. Now it goes, nah, now it's Time Ranger for you, huh? I've decided to just split it up between decades. Okay. So it's like... For 1970s, it's just a th- like Go Ranger. Yep. 1980s, as of right now, it's Live Man. 90s, I would probably say Ginga Man. Yeah, I was gonna say probably the same. Uh, two. F- Time Ranger gets gets shoved. In. You know what? Time Ranger gets shoved into the 90s because for the 2000s, I would say Hurry Kenger. And then 2010s. Zoodger. Zoodger. Cool. So I, have, I have five personal favorite sentences. You, you have a Sentai of Sentais. Oh my goodness, I, that's like fifteen. People. So re, I just want to I just want to quickly touch on something. So recently, uh, I I got my VS Memorial set finally for uh, Luke Ranger Pat Ranger, and I'm I was very happy to get it. And like I actually think I'm playing gonna plan on rewatching Luke and Pat because oh I just like. I keep thinking about it so much, and I just, like, really loved the show and loved a lot from it, and so I feel like I just need to, like, do what the, the same thing I did with Drive, where I just gave another rewatch, and then, like, 
I think it might be one of my favorite like shows. So. Oh god! Oh gee, no! I don't do that. Oh no! So yeah, so I think but I might get. Would be interesting to watch. Ultraman. If Ultraman became a success. No, 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 no! Like a Power Ranger style Ultraman show, where we take footage from an Ultraman show, but we add American actors. Oh god! Oh, uh, it's called the Tegan. <laughs> No, that doesn't count. It's better. Uh, but yeah, so like, I, I I think I might just rewatch Living Pack because I think it, it's a great time. Well, you do that. I uh I was watching clips of the crossover movie of Living Pack. Me too. Oh boy, I, like, just little snippets I've seen on. Twitter, I didn't like what I saw. I saw a scene where Noel was gonna go up to to a looping out Umika. To ask her out, but then Sakia just comes right in. I'm like, all right, Sakia has a thing for her. And then I just, for some reason, I just started getting super gay. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're so cute together. Oh, Vegas is reminding you of Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. But more Ultraman. Yeah, because Gridman's kind of just like, he's, he's like Ultraman, but he's not an Ultraman. Though, they need to do a Gridman Ultraman crossover. Nah, yeah, no, no, it's inspired not. by Ultraman. No. No, yes, but if you want to argue, argue about an Ultra Ranger. Yeah, go, actually, go watch Ultra Ranger. Go watch Ultra Ranger where we talked about Gridman and SSSS Gridman. Everyone argue about it in the comments. Yeah. I still need to upload episode 127. You guys are premium cast fans. <laughs> make sure to make our episodes feel relevant. So, we did it. We've reached episode 300. So. Well, we're done! <laughs> 300, yeah. that's the perfect number to get out. We've had a good run. Yep. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 So, next week is going to be special, obviously. Yep. We are not going to have a traditional feature topic. Next week. We're going to talk about the new episodes of Sentai and Rider as usual, mm. and instead of a feature topic for the actual episode 300 recording, we're going to do a new Q&A. So, to facilitate that, I'm going to create a new channel in our Discord where people can post questions. I'm going to say no more than two, maybe three questions per person. And I want everyone to be very conscious of the fact that we may not choose everyone's questions. Can we please do a favorite, like, fucking suit list update? I really want to do that. Yeah, let's all, let's all yeah, give yeah. updated favorite suits. Yeah! yeah! Or at least, like, update on questions yeah. from the first If there's any Fuck questions yeah. from last time that you would... That we would no, like don't ask that! But I will answer, it's pretty fucking question. big. Blaze, you just lost your cameo spot on <laughs> Ultra. You, you, <laughs> you now only get two questions. Alright, uh, but before we go, I would like to introduce what the next Super Sentai tribute episode will be for in July. <gasps> so since we did Ichi's birth year, I guess, Lane, you're next. Yes! Your birthday is July 10th, which we're actually going to talk about the first Sentai season of the Heisei era, and unfortunately, the only Super Sentai season that still is the last one to be fully subbed. Fun. In English. Kokuso Sentai Turbo Ranger. Turbo Ranger! These guys look fucking awesome. Uh, just keep in mind, guys, what we saw of Live Man, how cool that was. <laughs> Excellent. Turbo Ranger... Really? So I'm like, excited. It was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, okay, but you know what? I, I need to show this because it's just, it's fucking great. What? But, uh, like, this happens in the show at some point. I don't know why this is my favorite fucking thing in this show. But there's one point where, like, their, the their suits are, like, have no power. So they just have these, like, plain-ass white suits. Oh, I love, no. I love oh, them. Oh, no! They're the white power range. I love them, though. That's so fucking... <laughs> I want to watch the episode where this happens. That's episode three. Oh, sweet! Oh, no! Yeah! It's like, the, it's like those edits that people made of the Tokyuji suits where they took, like, all the stuff off of them. They look like plain-ass suits. Vegas, no, delete that. Yeah. Vegas, no. Um, Vegas, maybe you shouldn't say things no, like that. No, don't do that. As I was, as I was segueing into earlier, aside from the episode discussion of Rider of Sentai and the Q&A, 
As we mentioned a while back, we are going to be doing a new script read for episode 300, which will be the Shattered Grid script. Uh, that's not going to be part of the actual episode 300 recording, because we need to figure out a day where we can get everyone together to do it. Mm. So it will be a separate release, but we're going to try and do it as close to the release of episode 300 as we can. So apologies in advance if it doesn't come out as soon as we would like it to, but we're going to do our best considering uh, the invasion going on, everyone's availability uh, to come over is kind of skewed. And it'll still be part three of the 300. Yeah, we're, we're counting it as part three of episode 300, even though it will be a separate piece. Sweet. Yeah, much like the Q&A will be its own separate part, but it will be like part one, part two. Can we, sure. get, can we get mini plus these guys like this? Super mini plus white turbo rangers? Yeah! No. I will buy them! No. You will not release the white power rangers. White turbo rangers! <laughs> what, 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 I, what, like, the first time Gar ever showed me those, I was just like, that's that's the cool one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I don't know why I love that so much. What the fuck is that? What you mean? There's something written on the tower. Uh, Ultraman, uh, Gar's Gar. the monster. No. I was just defending Ultraman. Well, yeah, I, Gar, Gar and I will defend Ultraman until the day we die. Go watch Ultraman. Go watch Ultra Ranger. Uh, Blaze is asking about HeroCast. We would like to get back to HeroCast. That's up to Tom. He's he's he, He's got his own situation going. Yeah. But uh, as soon as he feels comfortable running it again, I'm sure we can start that back up. Absolutely. And if you're all wondering where Paul went... He just left. He just slinked away in the middle of the episode, as he do. Yeah, yeah, we don't... No, he just... Oh, probably, really? uh, probably, I think he was just tired having a smoke. No, I see. I think he's he was tired. for like an hour and a half, though. Probably. I mean, well, there is a crunch out there. Home. Man, man was man was literally. I was literally giving him a ride home at the end of the podcast. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so anyways, thank you for Paul's outside looking for Earth tones. <laughs> thank you for listening, watching, <laughs> subscribing. Uh, comments for me, please. Yes. Yep. Okay, I I want those Baconator Pringles. We'll find them. I don't think it's I safe right them. now. I won't find them. Um, yeah, so thank you all for listening and watching and all that. You said that. Well, <laughs> now you know how it feels. <laughs> yes, I do. You repeat shit I say all the time. I know. Um, so uh, we will see you next week. Be awesome. And uh, don't forget to use our Skip the Dishes code in the description. Hell yeah. And tune in for my Red Pop stream uh, Saturday night, 9.30. Yeah, the stream when, when Raven's streaming, me and Ichi can't. <laughs> well, uh, well, then we'll stream on Sunday. Yeah, you oh. guys, I got a schedule. You guys can literally do it at any point. <laughs> Whatever you want to do in the day, you're going to record. Then you're assholes, because it's my schedule. <laughs> wait, wait, you guys can't stream we'll just No, because he uses the oh, Studios Twitch. Channel. We'll oh, just stream on Mixer. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. How about Blit? Facebook Shit. Gaming. All right. Bye, everybody. And we'll see you next week for episode 300. Woo! Where we talk about episode th- where we talk about the movie 300. No. No, no the 300 sequel. Down. Oh, Rise of the Empire? Sure. Less down. No.